Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution to the problem named Permutation Minimization by DQ taken from today's code forces round. Both the easy version and the hard version of this problem are very similar in terms of their solution although they don't look to be similar problems but obviously the easier version is much easier to implement and to understand than the harder version and both problems involve a similar, a very similar actually greedy algorithm but the first version only requires you to know the DQ data structure and uh, a simpler greedy idea the second version uses almost the same greedy idea but you need to know a Fenwick free data structure also and you need to know how to count the inversions using coordinate compression and Fenwick free data structure so in this video I'll be explaining the solution to E1 so in this problem we are basically given a permutation of size n and a permutation of size n is, a, is an array of size n in which each integer from 1 to n occurs exactly once and we are also going to consider an empty dq and we need to basically go through the permutation of size n and add each number from that permutation either to the beginning or to the end of the dq so for example if the permutation is 3 1 2 4 then we can add 3 to the beginning or basically 3 to the end because in both the cases the, the dq will contain 3 whether you add it to the beginning or the end then we can add 1 to the beginning 2 to the end and 4 to the end to get 1 3 2 4 and we need to find the lexicographically smallest sequence of elements in the dq after the after we traverse this entire permutation and we basically need to answer this for t independent test cases so since the sum of n is up to 10 to 2 into 10 to the power of 5 and we have about 2 seconds and n log square n or n log n or n solution works and the solution which I'll be presenting is O of n so let's go through some examples to understand how we can solve the problem greedily so in the first example we are given 3 1 2 4 then let's try to find out the lexicographically minimum permutation by adding elements either to the front or to the end of the dq so let's see that the dq uh, initially contains element 3 because that's the only possibility then we can add 1 to either the beginning or to the end so it's obvious that we need to add 1 to the beginning because we want to minimize the permutation so from here itself we get the first observation that 1 is going to be the first element of our optimal uh, permutation or optimal dq or the lexicographically minimum dq and the reason being we can always add 1 to the beginning of the dq and we can always ensure that one is the smallest one is the first element which is also the smallest element then we are going to uh, basically go to the element 2 notice that 2 has to be added to the end and similarly 4 has to be added to the end because if either 2 or 4 is added to the beginning then we are going to basically remove one and it's not optimal to remove one now let's consider the example 3 to 1 so if we are given the initial permutation 3 to 1 then our dq would initially add 3 because that's the only option then it's actually optimal to add 2 to the beginning because 2 is the smallest element which has come so far so let's add 2 to the beginning and the reason why we add 2 to the beginning or the reason why we add the smallest element so that's our second observation always add the current element to the beginning only if it's the smallest element so if and only if it's the smallest element so far and the reason why this strategy works because so for example when we add one we are going to add it to the beginning and the so if it's the smallest element and the basic uh, reason why this greedy strategy works is because if we add the smallest element to the beginning it's always going to minimize the permutation because a permutation is lexicographically smallest when uh, the first element is the smallest or basically when the first element where two, where the two permutations differ the uh, the element in the first permutation is smaller than the element in the second permutation so basically we are always trying to minimize the element in the beginning of the permutation that's why it's always optimal to add the smaller elements to the beginning and so obviously if we get the element which is the smallest so far then we should add it to the beginning otherwise if it's no, if it's the smallest if it's not the smallest so far then we should add it to the end 
because there's already going to be a smaller element in the beginning and adding this new element will only make the permutation worse. So that's the general reasoning why behind, behind why this strategy always works and the implementation is very straightforward. I shall be showing you. So in the implementation, I take in the value of n, which is the number of elements. Then I create a dq int, which represents the final answer because we need to print the dq in the end. Then the minimum value so far is represented by the variable mn, which is 10 to the power of 9. Then for each i going from 0 to n, we take in the value of ai, which is the current element in the permutation or pi. And so basically it's pi. And if, so basically we'll do minimum is minimum so far with pi. And if the minimum value is equal to pi, then we'll add pi to the front of the dq. Otherwise we'll add pi to the end of the dq because of the greedy strategy, which I just mentioned. And in the end, we just print the elements in the dq. And that's basically the full code. Now I'll just submit this code to see that it gets accepted. So as you could see, my code got accepted. I hope you like this problem and my solution for this problem. If you had any doubt, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.